What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Home Built Workshop. Today we are going to build a brand new video editing computer. I'm going to show you how I put together this home built machine from a bunch of parts. It's not that hard. Stick around, check it out. Well guys, right off the bat, I just want to be really clear before we jump into this build, there are a bazillion different options when it comes to picking and choosing the components you're going to put in your computer. All of us have different needs and requirements depending on how you plan to use your machine. So please make sure you take the time, do your research, figure out what you need and what you don't need. Just because I may be using something in particular, please don't think that I'm telling you that's what you have to do. Make sure you understand what you need when you're making your choices. We all use our machines differently and just take a few minutes and learn about the components that you need to have. I am not a computer technician. I just like to do things myself. I'm gonna to try to offer some tips and tricks that might help you out in your build. Now the biggest reason that I'm building this new machine is because my main video editing machine is at least 12 years old and it's starting to show some signs of wear, blacking out and other scary things when you're in the middle of editing a video and at the time of filming this it's April 2020 we got a lot of work from home stuff going on right now and this old machine just can't cut it it's got to be upgraded so come on in a little bit closer and I'll show you all these parts that we're gonna put in this thing you're gonna show everybody what we have for parts No. why not you're gonna show them but I'm gonna pop up like this can you start it so here are all the parts for this build. What we're going to be using are the MSI MPG X570 Gaming Plus motherboard. And in that, we're going to slap this AMD Ryzen. This is the 3700 3.6 gigahertz. This is the Ryzen 7. This is what I'm mostly excited about because my other computer is only a four core. This is an eight core 16 thread. So I'm hoping to see a lot of increase we have an EVGA 650 watt 80 plus gold rated power supply. This should be pretty cool because it's fully modular. We can only use the cables that we need. For our C drive, for all of our operating system and programs and stuff, we're going to use this Samsung 970 Evo. This is an M2 solid state drive. Should see a lot of speed out of that. Windows 10 Professional. For RAM, we have the Corsair Vengeance LPX. This is 64 gigabytes of RAM. This is 3200 megahertz. This is the fastest RAM recommended for this processor without overclocking. And finally for the graphics card, this is one area where I tried to save a little bit of money instead of going with like a 2060. We are going with the EVGA GeForce GTX XC Ultra. Should be plenty enough graphics card again because I'm not gaming or anything like that. So this should be plenty. Most of the video rendering for my software is done by the processor. It doesn't utilize the graphics card as much. So, so these are all the parts that I assembled. Like I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of options depending on your needs and how you plan to use your system. So there are areas that could be upgraded from here. Some of it may be more than what you need, but someone else may want something less you just have to do what's right for you in your budget. This is what we're going to use. The case that I'm going to put all this in is my existing case that I've had for quite some time. It's a Cooler Master case, so I didn't have to buy a case. I'm just going to reuse the existing. I've got it all cleaned out. I've got all the stuff out of it. We are ready to start opening up some packages and get this stuff installed. You ready to start opening packages? Right on. Let's do this. The first thing we're going to unpack is the motherboard. This is the thing we need to start with first for this build. Most motherboards come with this little plate that covers the jacks and all the plugs on the back. We gotta install this before we put the motherboard into the case. The first thing I need to do are make sure these little brass standoffs are in place. Now, since this is a rebuild of a case that I was already using, these standoffs are already installed, but make sure that you have them in the right place according to the specs that your motherboard requires. This one requires nine different standoffs. Just make sure you double check the manual for your motherboard. It should tell you where you need to locate those standoffs. Always make sure you tighten these screws down by hand. Please don't ever grab an impact driver or anything like that. You don't want to do anything that could crack this motherboard. 
I'm gonna try to connect some of these wires as I go. Right now there's this bundle of wires here that connects two terminals right here in this area. You wanna take a look at the manual for your motherboard. It's gonna explain where everything needs to go. Here in my motherboard, it gives a diagram of where everything needs to go. So you just have to find the one that correlates to the connector and make sure those get plugged in in the right spot. I'm really taking my time during this process because I want to make sure that I don't plug anything in wrong. And now before we bury it, I'm going to install the hard drive. This is what will be the C drive. Isn't that crazy what they are now, these little solid state M2 drives? It's going to plug in right here, but first we need to move this little standoff over here to fit the size of the drive. This also gets secured with a screw. Now I believe I am at the point where we can install the CPU. I'm not gonna do the cooler just yet, but oh, I need like light, light rays shining out of there. The AMD Ryzen 7 processor. We'll go ahead and get this guy installed. Then we'll install the memory and then the cooler. Now when you're installing the processor, there's one corner that's marked differently than the other ones. This corner has to align with this mark on the motherboard. Not sure if you can really see that, but it has to be oriented that way. So for this, that little gold corner goes against this right here. So we're gonna pull up that little lever. Carefully, carefully. Don't force it, this should just go right down in place. Then lock it down and our processor is installed. The memory just snaps into place. Make sure you refer to the instructions for your motherboard to find out if it has to go in specific slots. For now, I'm going to use the stock cooler that comes with this processor. I don't plan on doing any sort of overclocking or anything too crazy, so most likely this will be fine. If I notice there's any temperature issues, I can always upgrade this later. This thing already comes with thermal paste on the bottom, so you don't need to apply more to the processor. If you're using some sort of aftermarket or replacing a heat sink, there's a chance you may need to apply your own thermal paste, but for now, I'm gonna go with this stock thermal paste. Should be just fine. There are these little tabs right here on either side that clip into notches down here on the motherboard. We're gonna hook this side first, and then the other side has this little latch that'll help everything lock down. I found that it's easiest if you start with the fixed side, then you hook the side with the latch, and then you can lock it down. Once you get the tab in place on the back, that you just flip that lever all the way up around. It kind of pushes a little bit hard, so it helps to give a little bit of downward pressure. Just make sure that it's actually hooked on the tab. The tab is very similar to this one on the back. Make sure it's hooked on there before you spring that back. So now I'm just gonna install the power supply. Now this has the fan on the bottom. I believe you could mount it either way if you needed to, but my case has a vent on the bottom and my intent is to put this up on a piece of wood so that you get good airflow. So I'm not worried about the fan drawn up from the bottom. The power supply just gets secured with four screws from the back really quick and simple. And now we can move on to get the graphics card installed. This is going to just pop down into the slots. You want to make sure that it seats fully. I always make sure to secure it with the screws. I don't want it to just flop around inside the case. And there it is. Basically the build is done now. The fun part of stringing all of the wires and trying to make all of the cabling look as neat as possible. In my opinion, this is probably the most time-consuming process during this whole build. 
It's really just a lot of time spent trying to figure out the best routing method for the cables and trying to figure out the best place to tie them up. I use quite a few zip ties trying to keep things tied up and out of the way. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I'd say there's no real right or wrong for this. Each case is going to be different and you just have to utilize the space that you have as best you can. Well guys, I think after quite a while of trying to get the cables arranged as neatly as possible, it's not perfect, but I feel pretty happy with it. I think we're ready to power this up. Let me get a monitor connected to this thing and we'll turn it on. The moment of truth, I got it all plugged in. I got it plugged into a monitor. It's fired up. Fingers crossed and hope for no smoke. So far that's a good sign. It's recognizing our processor right there, 8 core. It's showing our RAM. It's registering the speed at slower than what it should be, but we'll be able to fix that in the BIOS once we get everything up and running. We're ready. We're ready to run the setup and get things loaded. All right, now it looks like the system is ready to install the operating system. I'm not going to cover that because depending on what you might be installing on your computer might be different. I'm using the little USB that you can get for Windows, but if you can do it through a download or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and work on that, but I believe that wraps up this build. What do you think, kiddo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's going to work out pretty good, so hope you guys found this helpful. Well, guys. There it is, the new machine all together. I cannot wait to put this thing to work. This thing is so much more computer than the one that I've been using for a long time. I can't wait to see the differences when I do some video rendering. This is gonna be awesome. So guys, I hope you found this video a little bit helpful. If you did, go ahead and give it a big old thumbs up. And also, I wanna encourage you, if you've ever considered putting together your own computer, something like this, I highly encourage you to give it a try. There is something very satisfying about putting everything together, hitting the power button, watching everything come to life, and seeing everything actually work. If you've been putting it off and putting it off and you want to try it, definitely go for it. It's very, it's a very satisfying process. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, anything like that, leave them down below in the video comments. Also in the description, I'm going to try to link all the parts that I've used for this build in case you guys want to check it out. So thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll see you next time. What is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> She's out of here. Now, I'm not all about the lights and flashing and things, but once I get everything set up, I'll be able to set the colors of this to where it doesn't switch and change around, but it looks kind of cool. Da-dun, da-dun. <laughs>